First game of the Premier League season, first press conference of the Premier League season. Eric Ten Hag faced the media today before Man United's game against Brighton on Sunday. And I'm going to run through all of the quotes from Ten Hag. He speaks about uh, Martial and his injury, how long that's going to be for. He speaks about Cristiano Ronaldo, him leaving the stadium early and all the other players who left the stadium early. Quite um, direct on that, as you would expect from Eric Ten Hag. Speaks about new signings, about the midfield, about De Jong. Well, doesn't really speak too much about De Jong, but I'll run through all of it. Make sure you drop a like on the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let's run through the main quotes. And obviously, the first and foremost bit of news is that Anthony Martial is going to be missing the game with injury. Eric Ten Hag here said that it's always difficult to say, and I hope he's not out for too long. I think we will have situations to sort it out. Now, I have I ran through my predicted 11 for the game in a video that got released at lunchtime today. I've gone for Bruno in a false nine with Ericsson just behind him. By the way, Ericsson, who's fit to start and a certain butcher is fit to start as well. I'll run through that in a little bit. But I don't personally feel that Ilanga is the right solution to play inside that role. And that, again, that's, that's more of a personal preference than anything. But Ilanga's not showing up in the preseason tour. And I would rather Rashford and Sancho keep their positions where they play well so far in the preseason rather than Rashford shifting through the middle. I don't think he's anywhere near as effective through the middle. That's why I think so anyway. But of course, Cristiano Ronaldo was the big talking point, as he always is, is Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, and after he left the, the Real Vallecano game before full time, uh, and so did other players. And that was the main thing that Eric Ten Hag really wanted to sort of address and, and push when he was questioned directly about Ronaldo. This is what he said. He goes, I know I have to point, and he was literally pointing, to those who left. They, there were too many players who left, but the spotlight is on Ronaldo. That is not right. So do your research and make out how many players left. Now, I, again, people have been sort of throwing this at me saying, Sam, you're so focused on Ronaldo. And I, I, I covered it all. Uh, I probably focused on Ronaldo in the initial aspect, yes, but now that I've stepped back, no, actually, no, I didn't. I spoke about Diogo, I spoke about all the other players who weren't actually involved in the match day squad. Uh, and I have mentioned other players, but because of Ronaldo and what's going on at the moment, of course the spotlight is more intense on him. Uh, Eric Ten Hag was questioned about, you know, you talked about these consequences of being un unacceptable. What does that mean? He goes, you mention it, you correct it, and he's moved on. But in terms of discipline, we're not going to see players like kicked out of the squad. Well, maybe, maybe we are. I don't know. We'll find out on Sunday, I suppose. Eric Ten Hag doesn't really want to take this much further. Doesn't really want to speak about it. And it's something you can really tell from... I mean, we, we could tell from his very first press conference. Back when he was unveiled as manager. How much... You know, remember when he walked in and shook everyone's hands? He's taken control of these press conferences. And because of the nature of his personality, very forthwith, very direct to the point. No pussyfooting around the topics. And he basically won't take any bullshit from the press. He's good... You need that. You definitely need that. Absolutely. He was further questioned on Cristiano Ronaldo. Of course he was. He said, I'm really happy. We have a top striker. He is here and is in the squad. And when he was asked there about whether or not he's going to be starting on Sunday, he gave absolutely nothing away. He said, we will see. In my opinion, I don't think Ronaldo should be starting on Sunday because simply put, he is not fit enough to start this game. Um, that's the main reason. I, I, I doesn't. I don't really care about what... If Ronaldo was completely and utterly fit and he'd had a full preseason, then I would, of course I'd be starting him in this game. Uh, but he's not. He had 45 minutes against Ray Vallecano and he was well off the pace. He's a couple of weeks at least away from full fitness. Unlike a certain two new signings, Eric Ten Hag, surprisingly here, has confirmed that Christian Eriksen and Lissandro Martinez are both fit to start for Man United against Brighton on Sunday. And both of them would absolutely go straight into my starting 11. I did my starting 11 video earlier and I put Victor Lindelof in as the left centre-back because I didn't think that Martinez was going to be fit. Martinez didn't play against Atletico Madrid. He played, I think, 60 minutes against Real Vallecano. Looked good. Looked very composed. But apparently he's fit to play. So obviously that four weeks training has been enough and Eric Ten Hag is happy to have him there. And I'd be very surprised then if he didn't start alongside Harry Maguire. I see no reason why Victor Lindelof would be kept in that team. I see no reason why Lissandro Martinez wouldn't go straight in. And given what's happened with Anthony Martial, so Anthony Martial's ruled out. As I said, I personally think that means we're going to likely see Bruno go into a false nine role. And if Lissandro Martinez is fit to start, then you've got him alongside Harry Maguire. That's really good news. That's great news. Because we saw in that first, uh, in the 60 minutes against Real Vallecano, just how composed on the ball Miss Martinez is going to be man and I think him 
alongside Malassi on that left-hand side is going to really transform our build-up play ability coming out from the back with the ball. It really, it's been such an Achilles heel of Manchester United for so many years. We've just not been good enough at bringing the ball from the goalkeeper through the defence and building up attacks that way. We've been the transitional team, getting it to the front as quickly as possible, using pace in behind, counter-attacking. Lissandro Martinez changes that ability to play out from the back with the ball. I also think he'll probably make Harry Maguire a slightly better defender as well. Just there is no negative. There is no negativity. Uh, no bad side to Martinez coming into that team. And I think if he's fit to start, I'd be surprised if uh, Eric Ten Hag didn't start him now. So maybe my, I've changed my back five that I decided earlier. I put Martinez there alongside Maguire with Malasia and Delo as the back as the fullbacks. Yes, please. Moving on to the next point here, and of course, it's about signings. We need more signings. Of course we do. And Eric Ten Hag was asked about this in terms of having more signings for the opening day of the season. It'll be a good situation, but I'm happy with the current squad. We make good progress. I'm happy with the signings until now. You don't need any player. You need the right player. And that is what we're working for. And he's reiterated that on multiple occasions now. Eric Ten Hag clearly, again, you might not like it, but he's obviously prepared to forego signing a midfielder if it's not Frankie de Jong. Which scares me, really does scare me, uh, because that means we're going to be seeing a lot more of Fred McTominay this year, but we're just, it's obvious that our midfield is not good enough. But he would rather, I suppose, cope with the short-term deficiencies, and, and he's, he's backing himself, because he said he's got, we do have a good squad, and the signings have been good, but far more is needed. Absolutely, I just don't think that we've got enough in-house in terms of midfield. And he was pressed further on the Frankie de Jong situation. He said, we want Frankie, do we? Uh, I didn't know. <laughs> it's about the right players, but I can't speak about players under contract at another club. When there is news, you will know. Uh, well, it's a standard line for any manager, really, when they're questioned about players who aren't signed. And oh, I just hope this Frankie de Jong situation ends with Frankie de Jong joining. As James Robson points out, he's saying that Ten Hag's insists here that the, at the end of the window without any further signings, he insists he will end the window without any further signings if he can't get the right target. And it's an implication that De Jong is the midfielder. He's plan A, he's plan B, and he's plan C. And we've spoken about that before on United People's TV. And again, you might not like it, lump it, but exactly what Eric Ten Hag wants to do. And he was asked here about whether he's happy with the current midfield options at Manchester United. He said, I think so. As we saw in pre-season, we did pretty well there. We have a good team, but we can still strengthen the squad. Uh, well, he's definitely being polite there because I don't think even, I don't think Eric Ten Hag feels that Manchester United have got enough in midfield. It's not just about strengthening in the squad. It's about transforming the shape of that whole midfield and uh, the number six role, which of course he's identified Frankie de Jong to be that player and the absolute necessity of it for Manchester United. It really is a case of if we don't sign de Jong, that Ten Hag's going to have to Blow us all away, I suppose, by getting that much more out of this midfield that we don't just get run over by an absolute ton of teams in the Premier League. I mean, we need, we're need we trying to compete with City and Liverpool this year. I mean, we won't be competing with those. I think they'll be on a different level. We're trying to compete with uh, Chelsea and Spurs and Arsenal and the teams around us. I don't think we can do that with the current midfield options that we do have, even if we've got the likes of Iqbal and Savage breaking through and nice youngsters. Good, yeah, great. We need Frankie de Jong absolutely need him but Eric Ten Hag's first press conference there the biggest news of course is that Anthony Martial is missing the game against Brighton and when he was questioned on the Ronaldo situation he didn't really give too much away you can let me know what you think in the comments below do you think Ronaldo will start that game I personally would be surprised I really really would I think Ronaldo will come off the bench maybe if United need him to other than that I don't think he'll start him uh he was questioned further about the you know the concept of all these being unacceptable and how is he going to discipline the players and that's what he said there uh he's happy with Ronaldo in the squad but he won't say anything about him starting on Sunday I'm um, that that for me that's the biggest news that's the best news Ericsson and Martinez both fit to start I didn't think the Martinez would be fit if he is fit get him straight in that team and absolutely straight in that team Ten Hag would rather have all the new signings in but they're not in just yet he wants Frankie and it's either Frankie or it's nobody and in terms of him Praising the midfield, yeah. Fred's good. McTominay's good. We need more. He knows we need more. He knows we need new signings. United have got to get it done. But that's the first press conference covered in full. Now look at that. All that in 10 minutes for you. That's 
efficiency. Make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe to United People's TV. But take it easy, everyone. Speak to you soon.